with the Open Public Meetings Act, this is to announce that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided. Also pursuant to the 2013 rules and re resolutions of the Board of Children Freeholders in the County of Burlington, time shall be set aside on the agenda for the receipt of public comments. Public comments will be received with, with respect to agenda items prior to board consideration of resolutions to be adopted. An additional opportunity for public comment will occur later in the meeting. Public comments shall be limited to five minutes per speaker. Unused time may not be transferred to another speaker. Persons may speak once per public comment period. I direct the deputy clerk to enter into the minutes of this meeting, this public announcement, and the advance written notice of this meeting. Freeholder Arda. Present. Freeholder Belvoir. Here. Freeholder Howard. Present. Freeholder Schwartz. Here. And Freeholder Director Donald. Thank you, Mr. Drake. At this time, I'd like to motion for approval to mention the regular public meeting of November 27th, 2013. Moved by Freeholder Carter. Is there a second? Second. Second for our house. Any discussion? Hearing none, all the favor still indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Events are adopted. At this time, we'll take the motion for approval of the minutes of the conference meeting for November 13th, 2013. Moved by Freeholder Howard. Is there a second? Second. Second for the bell card. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor still indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That's our topic. Or approved, I can say. We are harder if you would. Jared Levenny is here for the proclamation. Gary, if you can come up. Thank you. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Levenny for his hard work these years with the um, Burlington County Department of Behavioral Health and Youth Services. You have um, chaired the local advisory committee on alcohol and drug abuse as a volunteer member, also known as LACADA, and you have performed a very important function for our county, which we wish to recognize this evening, because part of LACADA's uh, purpose is to run the municipal grants for the drug alarms, and so you've had opportunity to work with all four municipalities in our county, and and work with them to be able to provide grassroots alternatives to youth to get into the So, is there anything you'd like to, to say to you? Thank you very much for allowing me to serve for all those years. God, I've enjoyed this work. The work that you do is important. I know we're very quiet, but we've always been.
added were very much needed and very much appreciated. So it's special to me to be able to stand here today and give you this proclamation. And thank you for your, your dedication and hard work and, and service. And we appreciate what you and your organization have done. So thanks. And now I'm sure we'll take pictures of
Thank you. Um, so, Mr. Troy, if we could just go through the bill list. Um, I don't have too many. On page 19, Carousel Industries, $97,561. Can you tell me what that's for? Uh, that's over emergency management for the 911 system. Page 32, Alaska Mechanical, $285,430. I'm going to think that's probably for the Peters to hear. Okay. Peters, did you say? Yeah, the HVAC equipment upgrade. Oh, okay. Page 46, Lippincott and Jacobs, $19,467.
So, and for the human services one, where you said there's a uh, promotional opportunity there, what's the uh, change in salary there? Um, the one position is going to be uh, $2,000, which is the CWA contract. The way the CWA contract is written, you either get the minimum of $2,000 or you go to the minimum of the new title that could be working. So one of them is $2,000, the other one a little higher than that because it's the minimum of the new title. Okay, do you know what that one is? Uh, I think it's roughly, I have to get back to you, I get back to you for meeting on that. Yeah. Anything further on number five? Number seven. Number seven, I'm wondering if Mr. McGuess or Mr. Krasen or Mr. Troy could explain what that is because that was in um, the conference. Number seven? Yeah. Rejection of the board of contract. This is just our, it's a pro forma, we do it every month. Nothing. I know, but just. No, there's, there's, uh, there's two contracts. There's one audience who don't know what this is. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly happy to explain it. This is basically a one of two contracts. And, uh, there was actually two contracts. Uh, one was for uh, the southern the scrap metal with Joseph, and the other one was for the purchasing of traffic signal parts. Any further questions on number seven? Number eight? Uh, number eight, I'm wondering why the date was changed. Traditionally, it's January 1st, now it's going to be January 2nd. Overtime. Could you only reduce overtime? Could you talk more about that? On January 1st, it's like a holiday, so we can get over time for officers, et cetera. Just, well, during the typical work day for county government, so there would be no overtime. Okay. Do you know how much we pay overtime? We, we do have that. Do you, do you know what that is? I don't have that. That's on number one. We can get that number one. We can get it. We will get that number one. Anything further on number eight? No, that's it. Okay. It's this time. All in favor of numbers 3, 4, 6, 9, 10, and 11 through 14. So indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? Those resolutions are adopted. All those in favor of numbers 1, 5, 7, and 8. So indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Those resolutions are adopted. <coughs> Freeholder order. Yes, thank you, Freeholder Director Donnelly. In reference to resolution number 15, is <coughs> a resolution that is calling on Bristol Township Zoning to summarily reject an application by Route 13 Bridge Partners LP of King of Prussia, which is requesting permission to construct a 50,000 square foot industrial materials burner near the Bucks County Riverfront. And this is very important to us at the county level because um, most of those who will be most affected by this hazardous waste incinerator are not represented by in Pennsylvania. The residents of Burlington County not only need to have their voices heard on this issue, but also to have their health and quality of life protected. So we are passing this resolution this evening to ask uh, the, the um, Bristol Township Zoning Hearing Board to reject this application for said industrial materials burner. And we are also setting up a task force, which will be headed by our Department our department of Health Head, Ethan Cullinan, and will also be managed by our county engineer, Joseph Ripley, and by our our department head of solid waste, Mr. Jerome Sheehan. And we feel this is a very important matter that we need to follow up with this task force as the hearing is scheduled for, rescheduled for January the 13th. And we want our environment and our residents to help to be protected and safeguarded. And we feel with the prevailing wind uh, moving to the west that it is going to highly impact our, our, our county. And we want to make sure our residents are protected and our habitats are protected. So we are going to be moving forward with not only with the resolution but with the task force to protect the interests of our residents. Thank you. Number 15 has been moved. Is there a second? Second. Second referral. How is any discussion? Hearing not all in favor, so indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The resolution is adopted. Three other order. Yes, at this time I'd like to move for unanimous adoption of items resolutions number 16, 17, and 18. Thank you. Move by Fiona McCarter. Is there a second? Second. Second by Fiona Howarth. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, so indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The resolutions are adopted. Fiona Howarth. Thank you, Director. At this time I'd like to move uh, unanimous consent uh, resolutions 19 through 30. Thank you. Move by Fiona Howarth. Is there a second? Second. Secretary Fuller-Carter, any discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor, so indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Resolutions are adopted. Real report. At this time, I'd like to move forward on the unanimous consent for resolution number 31. Thank you. Move for the reports. Is there a second? Second. 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 Howard, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, so indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Adopted. Questions to the press. Um, on number eight, the reorganization of the Soviet Union. Soviet Union, still in the, um, well, obviously. Mm -hmm. And number 11, um, by leasing the farm, it was over 
Okay, they don't, you don't have to decide on the bidding wise? So it's a non bid decision? For professionals, no. Right, no, okay. Well, why that company? Experience and qualification. Um, it wouldn't have anything to do with them donating money to your campaign? To whose campaign? Your campaign? Um, I have no knowledge of that. $5,000 to your campaign? No, no. I no knowledge of that. That sounds a lot like pay to play. Uh, that's why I'm a recent graduate from Oxford University. Uh, political science, uh, so it's one of the things that I want to get involved in, in, in my county and, and what they're doing. And that just sounds to me, though, a little, how, how that company decided it, it sounds, like you said, just professional and that's how they decide, but then, I mean, this is a pretty, this is a pretty big chunk here. And uh, so I'm, I'm just curious, beyond why mass construction, or why, why mass construction was decided upon beyond just that's how it's just chosen. Besides our qualifications and experience, and that's why we would make so it's a coincidence with the two campaigns as well. Well, I do think it's a coincidence, yeah. Uh, Who's on the selection committee? Myself. Yep. So five thousand dollars to a campaign doesn't. Mr. Brickley should have no knowledge. Uh, no knowledge of that. Let's be clear. Uh, okay. Uh, no knowledge. Welcome to our meeting. Our staff doesn't get involved in our campaigns oh, okay. or our election campaigns. Sir, let me finish. Our okay. staff does not get involved in this. No idea. Oh, I'm saying that the, the freeholders also don't get involved. With with one company though, it's just a, it's a, it's just obvious to me coincidence that they donated the money to your campaign. And Mr. Stanfield as well. That's I think it's just, it's for someone who lives in the county, it's Lord. Ms. Stanfield. I'm sorry, I apologize. I came back from New York, so I'm trying to readjust in New Jersey. I apologize. Uh, but yeah, so once again, just the point. But so it's just a coincidence. Five thousand dollars donated to. Your campaign, two thousand, and then one thousand dollars to Mr. Tyler. On that, I pin this information from the internet, so the Google search how it reports. So again, uh, I guess that I, my answer is it's just a coincidence that money is given to you and you decide on this company, just by coincidence. Well, we don't just we, we take the recommendations from our staff. Oh, okay. so your staff. We take the recommendations from our staff. Yeah. We always take the recommendations from our staff based upon the qualifications and, and the experience that they've had, whether they've done things to other counties, um, whether they've done things to the state, uh, and and based upon the qualifications, we have a review committee, the review committee takes a look at it, they walk into us and they say, we recommend these people, and then everybody sitting at this table, <coughs> on both sides of the aisle, have to vote on it. And we all voted yes. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Was it split vote? Was it split vote? Yes. You would I had a question about um, that. I was worried that it didn't go out for bid because it was a quarter of a million dollars. And it was so okay, so it not was all of you decided. No, it was three total. It was three. Yeah, three, okay. That's, that's, not, that's not all. No. no. Um, and my, my foot on that. Okay. Um, and what town do you live in again? Maple Shade. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, well, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it just concerns me that. Again, I, I mean, if, if my answer is just, just a coincidence, then I, I don't know. That, that just seems a little inappropriate that the coincidence is just happening. I think the other piece of information that you're missing is that uh, every year we vote on a qualified pool of professionals for uh, engineering services and they are made up of multiple businesses or corporations that the selection committee well, has. Well, they keep pointing to you, so I'm just going to look at you. Um, no, and I'm saying, yeah. so when the professional staff has a professional contract to, to award, yeah. you go to the pool, which is which is a created through state statute, and they bring <coughs> their recommendation to the table. So every year there's a pool of professionals created for this purpose, and there is a threshold dollar amount that you do not go above when uh, appropriating gotcha. uh, the contract. Okay. Well, then, thank you. Well, you thank you. Your time. I, time's up. My time's up? Yes, sir. I just think it's a little you know, coincidence. The pool is now on the you contributions to your campaign. You've made that, you made that point. Any further public comment? Thank you. Thank yes, sir. Much. I'm Steve Stern from Norman Graham Memorial. I just want to get some clarification on what the government said. I understand the process that went through. So tell me if, if this is correct that for this type of contract, there are a number of qualified companies that you choose, a, choose among to do that work. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. In, in this case, how many companies were qualified to do that work? How many are in the pool for construction management? Off the top of your head, not roughly. Several. Okay. 
over 10. Over okay. 10. Just about all their engineers, everyone wants in for construction management. Okay. So you've got the, let's say there's 10 companies and, and you, you have this work to be done and you can choose among the 10 companies. What are the evaluation criteria that you use to choose among those 10 companies? This is a $5.3 million project. It's going to involve human services, which is a high constituent involvement organization. It's one of our largest buildings. It's going to be the exterior of the building as well as the roof. You're going to be dismantling the exterior of the building. All the while, you're going to be maintaining services. Construction management and inspection is an hourly based determination. When they're, the contractor's there, they're there. So it's the services they're going to be providing with, with, with regards to coordinating, with the user agency, coordinating with my office, coordinating the contractor and the subcontractor. Okay. So the evaluation process is not numbers. In reality, is a quarter of a million dollars for the size of the project that it is, is really not. This is a professional services contract. I'm just trying to understand why one company was chosen without a bidding process from the other qualified companies. They, they, they were evaluated based on qualifications and experience. Mass recently did a very good project on behalf of the county, which the cream rose at the top. That's why they were they, they were in a high consideration for this project. So it's more subjective than other. And I think based on the nature of what we're doing here, absolutely you would want it that way. Because the lowest the lowest bidder is, is not necessarily going to yield you the best product. So Again, my question is, what were the objective criteria? Was it their past performance? Was it their qualifications in terms of the uh, experience of their people? You know, what, other than you know, throwing a dart at a board, how do you determine which company is the best qualified? Qualifications and experience. Okay, and are those, are those evaluation criteria available to the public? Yes, they're in the RFQ process. Okay. It's typically three projects of similar size over a particular period of time, it's either three or five years. So how do I get a copy of that? that are okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any further public comment? Yes, sir. Don Barth, Mount Royal. The facility that you're working on. Sir, would you direct your comments before? The facility that's being worked on. Who was your designer in that? An architect or an engineer? Oh, yes, sir. <coughs> Which? Who there were two. Uh, Alamo Associates designed the exterior uh, brick and window replacement. TNM designed the roof and uh, scaffolding replacement. So the feeling is that those companies, those companies are being paid a certain amount for observation, right? No. They're being paid for that design. They're being paid for design. You need to leave that from their contract. I'm sorry. You need that from their contract. I don't believe we deleted anything from their contract. They provide technical assistance in the form of shop drawing review. If there is a design question that comes up during the course of the project, so they do provide services during construction. They were hired under under the AIA contract. I don't use the AIA contract. Did your contract not require observation by the architect engineer? They provide ser services during construction. That services includes observation, correct? If requested. Okay. Their typical role is shop drawing review as well as responding to okay. requests for information from the contract. That, that's defined in their contract. I'm just trying to get at if you're paying the architect engineer for observation as well as paying the construction engineer. Well, there has been argument over the years that if you have the same guy reviewing it that designed it, you've got the fox mining the chicken coop. So that argument works well, both. I don't have any problem with the construction manager taking that role, but I don't want all us to also have to pay the architect engineer for that same role. But the the construction manager, the construction manager, they are there to manage construction. If there is a problem brought up by the contractor relevant to a design element, it's doesn't measure correctly, it doesn't fit correctly. At that point, the construction manager inspector would go back and consult the design engineer to resolve the issue. The construction manager has a contract with you all. With the county, he's represented. Right. The and the AE, the architect engineer, also has a contract with you. That's correct. The contractor has a contract with you. Also correct. 
labor also has a contract. <coughs> so the construction manager can, can go directly to the contractor and tell them that's not right or whatever? That's not typical in... No, but that's why I'm asking. How does, how, how, does he, how does he enforce his work with the contractor? He makes recommendations. To you all? To us, okay. and we direct. Okay. The other question is then, is it's my understanding that by the play to pay, pay to play government or state regulations, that they need the, the whoever's involved, the, the, the construction manager, has to tell you that he has donated to, to whoever he's donated to. Isn't that correct? Mr. Brickman would be aware of that. Mr. Nelson? There's, I think what you're talking about is a non-fair open process where a bank for every time left. Or a non-fair open process where someone has to disclose they made donations to these folks, whoever, over the last period of time, over the last year or 18 months. Uh, if you go through a fair and open process under the state statute, this is regulated by the state, but also county resolutions in terms of implementation. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear your question. Sorry. Was it true that somebody made a comment that, frankly, either all the, all the construction managers or frankly all the construction managers in the county were on that list? That's not what you said. You said there are at least 10 on the list. No, no he, he went on to say further that most of the people on the, in the county are on that list. I'm confident you can say that because we actually have firms that operate in the county that are outside of the county. I can't speak for not, every I'm not here in the county whether they're in the county or not. Well, that you just said that every practically every engineer in the county is on the list. That's not what Mr. Burkett said. He said there are at least 10. We deal with engineers across the city. I don't agree, I don't agree with what you, your comment because if, if there's a number of people on the list and somebody's made contributions, maybe it's possible that uh, you want the people who want who had the biggest contribution. Simple as that. And I don't, I don't agree that it's in, a, in accord with a play by day. Thanks, sir. Any further public comment? Hearing all that closes portion of the interview. Thank you for those comments. Reverend Schwartz. Yes, I just wanted to just review them to remind everyone that at the last meeting, um, I did vote against giving um, the contract to Mass because of the amount of money that I thought, and I still believe that I know we have a qualified list, but I think when we're starting to get a quarter of a million dollars, it should go out on the list. Therefore, I voted against that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is I was privileged this past week to attend the uh, Farm Bureau Wives Dinner, and um, 
kudos to our agricultural community. I think the student was one of the highlights of the year. It was very enjoyable. Uh, it was a privilege to sit with Mary Pat. Who, Mary Pat, you want to discuss this further? There were, there were like major, there was regular prizes, and then there was the biggies. And guess who won one of the biggies? Mary Pat, would you like to discuss that? Certainly. Um, the big prize that I won was um, the guest speaker was on um, Alice Kitchen. She was a graduate, I believe, of BCIT, the culinary program, and the local culinary program. Chef at Madison Cafe went on Hell's Kitchen and now has a job um, in, with the new restaurant that's uh, opening soon. So um, she, the prize was she would come to my house to um, cook a dinner for four, and I asked her to whether she would instead um, of coming to my house, come to the Ag Center when the new kitchen is open and do a cooking demonstration um, for the general public. Always take it again. I am. <laughs> a girl. So I want to commend you on, on your Thank wonderful you. gifts back to us. Thank you. Thank you. Freelor Goldberg. Thanks. Um, so I'll just echo Freelor Schwartz that that was really a great uh, event. And thank you, Mary Pat, for the generous donation and for going your own prize for the county. That was very cool of you. So. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I just want to say happy holidays to folks. I think this is our last meeting before uh, the Christmas holiday. So for those who celebrate it, Merry Christmas. And um, you know, enjoy the holiday season. That's all I have. Thank you, Fred Howard. Uh, same here. Uh, happy holidays uh, to people coming up. Uh, Merry Christmas. Go to celebrate. Um, appreciate all you guys do for us in the county. And uh, we'll run Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hiller, director. I just wanted a couple points to put starting off saying Good evening, everyone, and first of all, as virtually all my privilege, I've said happy holidays, safe and happy holiday season to everyone here. Happy New Year to everyone that we do meet before the New Year. I'd like to say that now. Um, in regards to the, some of the public comment this evening in, in trailer shorts, I would encourage you to lobby the legislature, the Democratic-controlled legislature, to change the statute in New Jersey regarding the negative life. The gentleman back there that's an advocate and political science major that I encourage you to lobby the Democrat-controlled legislature to change pay to claim laws if you feel so strongly about bidding professional services. You know, the caution I have is if the county is being sued, I don't know that I necessarily want to go to the low bid. That's that's just the way I look at it. I'm assuming that's the way the legislature has looked at it over, over these many years. 
With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Senator Howard. Is there a second? Second. Second. Order of order. All in favor, so indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Aye. 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 A